Hey, what's up, gentlemen? Uh, hopefully your Sunday is off to a lovely star. We are going to run through some baseball really quickly and get on to the writing and whatnot. Hopefully you guys are enjoying your weekend. I'm looking forward to some playoff NBA basketball this week. I know I am. Yeah, definitely looking forward to the NBA playoffs. One thing I was meaning to mention to you all morning that we'll have to go over. The only thing that's not exciting about the NBA playoffs is it's the same slate every other day. Because like all the same games are every other day. Yeah, I can see how that's kind of annoying. Uh, it'll change, though, once like one of these series ends and as they call it, start changing a little bit. So that will be a little annoying for the first round. But uh, we'll make do with what we got. Uh, they got the contest already up on overlay for NBA tomorrow. The MLB ones will probably be dropping momentarily. Looking at that 199 jackpot and thinking, man, I got to get me some of that. Yeah, uh, it's coming back. I think it's back tomorrow, and let's get this. Yeah, I'm super excited to talk over this slate tomorrow on Overlay. I'm super excited Same. to talk it over on DK. I'm ready to roll on NBA playoffs. So go sub, sign yourselves up and get a membership. Uh, I love opening round of NBA playoffs for DFS because a lot of people just don't remember the adjustments that you have to make for playoff basketball. I'll tell you what, man. Just that game yesterday was a really nice appetizer for the playoffs. I didn't watch the whole thing, but what I, what I did watch, I mean, it was really exciting. I didn't catch a minute of it. I actually had other plans yesterday, and it looked like it turned into a really good game, so I'm a little uh, little annoyed I didn't see any of it. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Uh, memberships up at the website, guys. Day passes. Uh, monthly gets basketball and uh, baseball, and we get football when it's out. Uh, we have a lot of, you know, our track record for NBA playoff success the last couple of years is it's good, and we'd love to help you all out. Uh, the NFL-only package is up for sale on the website, uh, 20% off right now. Uh, subscribe to the station if you're new to it. Thumbs up is always appreciated. We're going to go out way out in a limb today. Uh, after our boy Marquez was not great yesterday um, and Montez was scratched the day before, we wanted to get a little nuts with our uh, pitching pick and go with this guy. I don't know if you all ever heard of him, Max Scherzer. He may have a Cy Young or two under his belt. And while we don't go out of our way to pick on the Orioles, who offense is better than most people realize, this is Mad Max under 11K on a day when the other pitching you know, options are just not great. Yeah, so it's funny. We've been talking a bunch about like you know not trying to pick on Baltimore as much as some other people, and that's the truth. We don't like picking on Baltimore as much as some others. We weren't high, that high on Corbin last night who got hit around a little bit. This is just a, a different beast, though. Um, first off, I do like hard-throwing righties against Baltimore more than I like left. I feel like they have a lot of righty power. Scherzer is the prototypical hard righty. Um, well, yeah, because you bring in Alberto and Severino, and all those guys have great splits against lefties. Exactly. So, you know, for my money, the best starter in baseball, I don't think anyone would argue that he's top five, nothing else. Again, we don't want to, like, go out of the way to always pick on Baltimore, but we're not scared of the Orioles. It's a good spot for Scherzer. And the biggest point is what you said at the end. I mean, there just are not really good pitching options on this slate. After Scherzer, the drop is big. And I think, you know, in all formats, it's smart to just lock Scherzer in and move on. Yeah, there is no Garrett Cole against Seattle or anything like that that you are uh, that you have to worry about. And there's also a ton of cheap offense today. And, like, the high-end offensive guys today are also not in great spots. So there's no reason to sell your soul to pay up for hitting today. Mm-hmm. All right, speaking of cheap offense, so you want to talk about my boy, Luis Urias. So I was able to catch a good portion of the Brewers game yesterday. He had a bunch of hits in it. Uh, and the key thing here, I mean, he's 2,500. He's dirt cheap. Yeah, I mean, he's way too cheap. I watched this whole game yesterday. <laughs> Excuse me. And he's a really good prospect. I know I've talked to you about him for like the past year. It was a big part of that Trent Grisham deal. Was hurt at the beginning of the offseason. Then on his the first day he was supposed to get back, he got diagnosed with COVID. So it's been a long, you know, it was a long offseason for Arias. He looks awesome right now. Again, I watched all his at-bats last night, putting the bat on the ball. I'm a fan of this guy. He's only 2,500. I don't mind a couple of Milwaukee pieces against Leicester today. And even if you don't want to use, like, Milwaukee against him, Urias just works as a filler. So I watched uh, a lot of this game yesterday as well. And my number one takeoff from the game, it was the first actually opportunity I've had to watch this this year. I love the extra rating rules. It's so much more exciting. It's just a, it's more, keep them. I mean, that's just, you know what I mean? Like that is what I, I love it. I think it's a great add to baseball. Those 17 innings, wear your pitcher out type of contest. I just, I'm not for it. If you want to change it back to that way in the postseason, fine. But I like the rules now. Same with you 100%. Uh, sometimes 
it's not great for baseball periods, but that's just a good rule change. And I think, you know, in our society now where nobody has the attention span to watch 18 innings, I, I think it'll do really well. Mm-hmm. All right, next up. So I looked at the offenses for a while today, and I did not have like top end offensive pieces that really jumped off the page to me, but there are a few very underpriced players out there today. And if you're looking at the Washington Nationals, which are, you know, a pretty good offensive team now that Juan Soto is back. Uh, Adam Eaton gets to bat right there between Soto and uh, Trey Turner, who's been, they've both been playing well. He's only 2,900. And while I'm not dying to pick on John Means, I'm certainly not scared of him. Uh, and I don't love the lefty on lefty split, but you're going to get some innings against the Baltimore bullpen. And Adam Eaton is just a significantly better player than 2,900. It reminds me early in the season when Michael Brantley was routinely priced below 3K, and you get a good player in a pretty good offense uh, for a very, very cheap price. Uh, by no means or stretch of the imagination do I consider Adam Eaton a must play or anything like that. But if you want to pay up for Max Scherzer and you've got a couple of high-priced bats you're looking at, check out Adam Eaton. It's just kind of a filler piece to let you complete your build. Yeah, definitely someone I was looking at also because, you know, Washington's not in a bad spot here. We probably like Means or I like Means a little more than, than other people do. But, you know, as far as Washington bats here, they're definitely uh, playable, definitely in a good spot. Eaton's just way too cheap, man. We don't like the lefty-on-lefty matchup, but that's not why he should be 2,900. No, he's had a bad start to the year, but he's looked better over the last week or so. Uh, probably helps hit in front of Juan Soto. I wonder if that makes a difference. Mm-hmm. All right, next up, uh, we're going to talk about a couple of higher-priced guys now. So let's shimmy on over to Houston, which I'm assuming will get a little love today based on the matchup and the fact that they got all the big names that go along with them. And you want to talk about Jose Altuve, and it sounds like you watched this whole game last night. I did, kind of like Urias. I watched a lot of Altuve's at bats. I was interested in him a little bit once I saw that he was moved down to the seven hole because a lot of times when you have a guy like this who's used to you know batting at the top of the lineup, a guy who's won MVPs, batting titles... When you drop them down, a lot of times the pressure gets relieved, and a lot of times you get like the monkey off their back. Well, Altuve, excuse me, wasn't amazing last night. You could see he was finally starting to see the ball better. He was getting comfortable in his at bats. He lined out in his first at bat. He hit the ball hard in his next couple times up. Finally broke through with a single in his last at bat. So we've talked a lot about how Altuve has struggled this year, but he's still an elite hitter. I mean, this guy is one of the best hitters of our generation. Maybe he won't ever be that guy again after the Houston cheating scandal and all that stuff. But I'm, if I were a a betting man and I am, I would bet that he's much (laughs) he's much more like the Altuve we've seen for years past than he is the Altuve we've seen for the past three weeks or however long. Uh, That's not one of my favorite parts ever on this show. If I was a betting man, (laughs) considering you'll bet on everything every single day. Yes, you are definitely would qualify as a betting man. All right. Next up, I want to head back over to my uh, Brewers against the Cubs. I want to call out something on the other side of the diamond today, and that's going to be Anthony Rizzo of the Chicago Cubs. So there's a couple reasons to like him today. One, like he is very affordable for who he is at only 4,600. Next up, uh, this guy's been routinely a Brewer killer throughout the years, put up, you know, Routinely puts together quality at bat after quality at bat. Big home runs against Milwaukee. Uh, knowing that the Brewers are up 2-1 to one in this series, I'm sure he's grabbing his hard hat and his lunch pail and he's coming to the diamond today ready to play some good baseball uh, as the Cubs try to even the series. Coming off a big game yesterday. Now, one of the things I like about him is we don't have a major sample size on his counterpart today, Josh Lindblom. Uh, but through the first couple of games of his uh, Milwaukee Brewer career, he is giving up a significantly different results to left-handed batters. So he's allowed four home runs this year, all of them to left-handed hitters. Uh, Lefties are hitting 150 points higher off of him than righties. And if you watch the way this guy's pitches moves, it makes sense just logically as a baseball fan why righties struggle against him more than lefties do. So uh, Rizzo would be a guy as a lefty from the Chicago Cubs that draws plenty of interest for me today as the Cubs try to even the series. Yeah, he's another guy. I watched a bunch of his at-bats last night, obviously, because I was watching Urias in the Brewers game. He looks good again. Um, you know, this is a, a really good hitter. Uh, not quite, or not on, like, the Mike Trout, Christian Yelich level, but a guy that's right on the level below that. Uh, consistent all-star type of guy. Good spot for here for him here at home against Lindblom, who has good strikeout stuff, but he is struggling with uh, – you know, consistently getting guys out on the major league level. Good, good spot for Rizzo here. Cog in the machine type of play with big upside, and he's very affordable at 4,600. There'll be plenty of times in this spot where he'll be like 5,400. 
you know, I was thinking, uh, you talked about his reliability, you know, over the past eight years or whatever it's been, Anthony Rizzo, year in and year out, what do you expect? You expect, you know, 26 to 34 home runs, 100 RBIs, he's going to bat, you know, 275, 280, something like that. I'm like, trying to think, who else is consistent as him? Like, the only other guy that comes to mind is the other Chicago first baseman, Jose Abreu. Year yeah. in, year out, they play every game, they give you the exact same numbers. They're not the best hitters in baseball, but they're at that step down, like those, you know, B-plus level type of players. Just very consistent. You always know what you're going to get from them. Look, like, give me Rizzo as my, as like my team's first baseman every day of the week. Yeah, you would be very, very happy with it. He's not going to light your world on fire, like... You know, the, like a Ronald Acuna, where you're like, this guy's right. like the difference maker of difference makers. But man, every single day he puts together quality at bats. You know exactly what he brings to the table. Amen. All right, guys, that's what we got for today. Don't forget to click that thumbs up button, and we will see you guys tomorrow for some NBA. Thanks, guys.